I'm swimming now. I've been going nine hours. How far? Right. He's, he's picked up the phone. <laughs> and I'm there feeding. I'm breathing there. And I see he's on the phone. I thought, oh, it's about nine o'clock. He'll be on the phone to the radio. Then I very quickly forgot that A was lot A was the radio. I forgot everything very quickly. I forgot he was on the phone to the radio. I forgot he was live. And um, I saw because I've been focusing on him a little bit on the phone, wasn't looking in front of me. And it, the first jellyfish I actually got stung by, it was there before I could see it. And it was just like round the neck. Um, oh. Come on out. Last few words put out to everyone before you go in. Uh, just a huge thank you for, for everyone who's got behind, uh, got behind the swim, got behind Acorns Children's Hospice, and uh, been so generous. You know, the uh, I say the interest and donations have been way more than I could ever have imagined. So uh, a huge amount of training has brought us up to this point, and um, yeah, I didn't really realise how far it was until myself. I until we came down and had a look, and uh, it's too late to hurt them. So here we go. Let's go. Uh, Grosey, talk to me, mate. We obviously have a, a lot of crack, a lot of banter. We've gone back and forth a little bit on message. You've had loads of people congratulating you. The more and more I've dug into it after, I knew a little bit about swimming the channel, right? Because I could probably do it with my eyes closed. But um, sure. I've done an open water swim. You were there when I did the last one. It was in a lake. Yeah. So it may, it may yeah. as well have been in a swimming pool compared to the channel because I've seen the videos. Anyone who followed your swim, mate, you're swimming through the night. The waves are ridiculous. We like we, you, mate. You must have been scared. Like who's swimming in the water at night? Like the natural thing is sharks. Um, yeah. Is is the jellyfish? Is all them things? Like how scary was it? And why did you do I'll, it? I'll, wait, Let's I'll, go out. Why did you do it? The, the the seed had been sort of planted a few years ago, and I just thought, well, we've got no excuse not to do it now. And um, but yeah, this yeah, the swim itself is uh, twenty one miles just over maybe point to point and that's from a place called Samphire and between Dover and Folkestone and uh, Cap Grenet a little peninsula that sticks out in northern France uh, uh, the swim was always going to take I said between 13 and 16 hours and it was just under 14 so th there was probably always going to be an element of, of dark swimming anyway um, and I'd rather start in the dark and finish in the light than the other way around and, and when it comes to it, you just don't care about the dark, honestly. I, I'd only done one, one swim, swim at night beforehand. I had 20 minutes in, in doing a night training session. And I'm, I'm not actually, sounds mad, I'm not like a great swimmer. So, um, you know, you see, you see, generally, you see some of these channel swimmers, right? And they are big bellies on them. It's like Goody in a set of speedos, right? And same with the women, they're big people. Uh, but they roll with the waves in the same way a sort of boxer would roll with the punches you know they never actually get properly hit and whereas I was just sort of trying to muscle through it um, and the one thing that, that, that doesn't happen to the sea it doesn't get tired and fatigued and it will just the waves will just keep coming at you and keep coming and um, there's only one winner so fortunately after that three and a half hour shift initially everything just settled and it was just and then I had the sunrise and that was incredible um, and and it's just a case of yeah clinging on really for the the last eight hours uh talking of clinging on i read some stuff after i don't know whether it's through what you posted or I just kind of read it online or whatever that uh you encountered um some friends along the way um mm. both um sea friends and jellyfish and there was also some people out on boats there that arguably shouldn't have been there it's, it's all over the news at the minute, yeah. people trying to get across. I don't know why they want to come to this country, but they genuinely do. But just a couple of interesting things that happened along the way, which I thought was uh, quite cool. No, you're right. I sort of did a video at the end, and I was, I was, my head was all over the shop. Um, and, uh, and he said, yeah, we saw three migrant boats. I was like, Christ. You know, I don't see that. When you're in the water, you, you're, you're breathing and f breathing to the side where the boat is. So you sort of, you're not staying too far, but not too close. You're staying close enough to the boat um, but you're also uh, feeding not literally but you're taking in as much as you can just to occupy your mind otherwise your mind goes wild you can't see anything underneath you um, so you just try to take stuff in so you see you see the massive tankers mate and the, the, the ferries and stuff and these things take the big ones probably take about a mile to stop 
So if we're on a collision course with, I didn't actually think about this until like yesterday. If I was actually on a collision course with one of these tankers, uh, it's very much a case of might has right, and they're they're not stopping for anyone. Certainly not a swimmer. Um, fortunately, we were never on that collision course, but seeing these, and we got quite close to them. They are like vast these things, and you're you're at their level, so it's quite imposing. But yeah, in terms of the in terms of the, the wildlife, um, just well, loads uh, of jellyfish. Hang, hang, hang on, we'll go back to the to the migrants. So, which way were they going? They obviously weren't uh, going back to France. They were they were coming they were coming yeah. towards you effectively. Yeah, they were doing a, a crossing the other way. Yeah, yeah. But they were but I think there were three boats to them. And in fact, a guy I'd been training with down in Dover, um, he did a channel swim on the same day, and uh, <laughs> he got he actually got across. He was couple of hours quicker than me got across and then on his way back he it was their boat that chucked them a line and then he was fundraising for a different charity and uh, I think the Daily Mail and tabloids ran a story on the migrant you know channel swimmer builder from Essex saves migrants so his fundraising went through the roof but uh, fair dues to him. Um, mate yeah. anyway what's a channel swim without having a jellyfish wrapped around your face and or being bumped by other bits of wildlife. That's the most interesting thing, I think, people. And that's yeah. probably the biggest worry, you know, superficial opinion of the swimming in open water is that you're going to get munched by a shark. I mean, I was in the sea, just up to me, knees, me ankles at the weekend. There was jellyfish everywhere. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that because that must have been a bit of a worry, naturally. But with yeah. your encounter, well, it was quite so uncomfortable. When the first three and a half hours, when it was really choppy, uh, the jellyfish were were, were were further down, so I, I couldn't, couldn't see anything anyway because it was dark. But um, you, you cannot avoid them in the dark anyway because it's dark. And but they were further down. So when it, as the light came, as as, as, day, as the sun rose and daylight was was about, and um, and, the, and the seas calmed, that's when they came to the surface. And I didn't realise how many different types of jellyfish there are. I and mean, if you can avoid them, obviously it makes sense to. But it. I, it's wasting my time to sort of just try and avoid every one because you, you disrupt your stroke and your rhythm and you're so wrecked by them anyway that you just you don't give a shit honestly mate most the worst feeling is that um is that feeling of oh i'm trying to avoid the jellyfish if once i got stung i didn't care you know i was trying i avoided a few and then i had one it's quite funny my brother was <laughs> bbc Hereford and Worcester, the local radio station here said do you mind if we call your brother on the boat to get a live update i said yeah fine here's his number they were going to call him around nine o'clock in the morning i told him they're going to call him he didn't know they're going to be live right so i see i'm swimming now i've been going nine hours how far right he's he's picked up the phone <laughs> and i'm there feeding i'm breathing there and i see he's on the phone i thought oh it's about nine o'clock he'll be on the phone to the radio then I very quickly forgot that A was a lot, A was the radio, I forgot everything very quickly. I forgot he was on the phone to the radio. I forgot he was live. And um and so because I've been focusing on him a little bit on the phone, wasn't looking in front of me. And the first jellyfish I actually got stung by, it was there before I could see it, and it was just like round the neck. Um and it was a quite big one as well. Not that the, the big ones are the bad ones, but it was stuck <laughs> stuck round the neck. And uh I saw oh, fuck it. I pulled the thing off and I, I, I can we swear on her? Yeah, you swear all you want, mate. I was like, oh, fucking C U N T of a jellyfish like that. And he's just he's just held his phone like that because he's live on the <laughs> he's live on the radio. <laughs> um Yeah, so I don't think they were best pleased, but they got some, you know, raw, live footage, raw, 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 footage. Raw, raw emotion and footage of what he was about. So but the sting itself is just as bad as like a, a nettle sting. So it's not actually that bad. Once you got stung, you're like, Pfft. if they're all like that, not a problem. But they sort of, until sort of two days ago, they were sort of scabbed up here on my shoulder. So yeah, nowhere near as fussed about jellyfish now as, a, as I was going into it. But the other one as well, it was just as the, because sunrise was about half five in the morning, but I think by half four, because it was such a clear night, it was, well, it felt like it was getting lighter anyway. And, um, and because of the moonlight as well, it's, it's, it's not pitch black, you know, it's not like going into a forest in, at midnight. Um, but I was obviously doing front crawl, my arm came over and uh, hit something, and it hit, it hit something so hard, it, 
that my arm then bounced back and I sort of lifts that stroke. I thought, fucking hell, what was that? And uh, I thought, it can't have just been a wave, you know, you can't, at least a, a strong wave, my arm would still go through because it's water. And my brother's like, yeah, we did see three seals, but we didn't want to tell you about that. I thought, ah, terrific, I probably, obviously knocked out a seal on the way, no doubt. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you don't, again, my brother was sending me pictures of basking sharks the night before the swim because he's a tosser. And uh, those things are only marginally smaller than the great white. I mean, they only feed, feed on plankton, so they're not dangerous. But, you know, with tusks like that, when they open their mouths, you, you don't want a close encounter with one, I don't suppose. So I didn't see any of that. Saw a, dolphin, a couple of dolphins on the way home. And, uh, yeah, that was all right. Mate, that's it. Well, I'll be honest, mate. You ain't selling it to me whatsoever. And now I can see why not many people have done it. So jellyfishes wrapped around your face. Um, basically great white sharks as well on the way over that you, you think you've got migrant boats that could run yeah. you over. Oil tankers, which don't seem that eco-friendly as well. You have to deal with all the spillages coming out of them. Mate, it was, I mean, watching it and I, I don't know whether I tweeted about it or messaged you or your brother on Instagram. I was genuinely, like we have a bit of a crap, right? So we, we tend to piss out of each other or whatever. Matt, I, I, I was watching it. I was like, this is unbelievable, right? So you're swimming through the night and all the stuff that you've just said. So you, a part of it was for you and you've mentioned the reasons why, but there was also an amazing cause that you were raising money, but also awareness for as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about them? Because I know it isn't just this yeah. swim that you've done it for. You've done a bit of work for them in the past as well. It was an opportunity to raise some money for... Acorns Children's Hospice, which they've got a, uh, a centre here in, in Worcester, um, one of a couple, one of one of three actually. And um, Acorns are the Worcester Warriors' main charity. They were well supported. We supported them when I was there, and they, they still have one of the players is a, you know, currently a, an Acorns ambassador. And so we used to go up and I don't know Christmas card time and make Christmas cards with the kids and. Easter presents and this, that, and the other, and just let's say trying to put smiles on faces. You're not really doing anything, and you, you just sort of, we're just taking the mick out of each other as players, and the kids find it quite funny, and you're just trying to put a smile on the face. That's about it. Um, but it, you know, and, and, and you try not to get too emotional about it because there, there, there's some. Well, these kids are they're, they're suffering sort of life-limiting, life-threatening conditions, and they're, they're not in a good way. Many of them. And, and and many of them um, have only been given a very short amount of time to live, that, you know, when they're born. So it is a really sort of humbling experience, but it's mad how like, positive they all are. And the helpers, the volunteers, the carers, many of which are parents of the children, um, uh, they, uh, they're all positive as well. They just get on with it. So, I mean, you're the worst for it, but... and, and uh, but you're sapping about double contact on a Tuesday. And then Tuesday afternoon, you go to the hospice and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa I can't actually believe we've been whinging. You know what I mean? The mm -hmm. things you whinge about. And I know we do it as a joke, but... Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a charity that, you know, because of the affiliation with the Warriors and the, and being at lo still being local, you know, so, yeah, had, a, had, a, had a link in there and obviously got a couple of kids now and we're lucky that our kids are healthy and we sort of think maybe you know it's the least we could do is a, a little bit of fundraising so um i didn't think we'd raise anywhere near as much as we have we're at about thirty-one thousand. it was this morning um which is unbelievable and um i didn't i didn't want to promise them anything in case we didn't reach it but uh we've certainly exceeded anything i expected to get uh, to, to, to achieve and you know i'm just so grateful for anyone that's got behind the swim and yeah hope, hopefully we've done our bit well, mate, absolutely class. And I can see how much it means to you. I know, we again, I'll reiterate, we like having a crack. And, you know, we do. That's the kind of way that we live our lives. But I can see the raw passion that you're talking about, um, the hospice and everything that they're mm -hmm. doing there. And I don't think it's just the money, although the money is really, really important. But I think raising the profile, in which you've done as well, uh, and hopefully off the back of this, going out to the millions of people on Rugby Pass, uh, we can put a link up and stuff like that for people so they can go on and donate, um, you know, Maybe. anonymously or, or whatever. But Grozy, mate, that was uh, class. And uh, congratulations again. An amazing cause. I can't wait to see you swim the Atlantic or do what Ross essentially did and swim around Britain. 
and almost lose your tongue and your willy on the way around as well with all the salt. But um, that was class, mate. Epic. Cheers, brother.